Hello and welcome to a DaVinci Resolve 16 grading tutorial. Today we're going to focus on grading an overexposed shot and some of the tools and tricks that we can mitigate some of these blown out highlights. At the same time we're going to be building up a corporate office look. So we're going to go quite blue green tones, quite a corporate environment. So the first thing to just say, um, I'm currently working in a DaVinci YRGB space. Uh, we're not working in a color managed workflow uh, today. This footage was shot Rick 709. I'm not doing any color conversions and there's no LUTs applied at any stage. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna address is my contrast and exposure. I'm gonna do that on my first node here. So I'm gonna bring down my, my gain and I might also increase my contrast a little bit. When I do this, I'm probably gonna push it a little bit too far and then adjust my pivot so I can see really where the contrast needs to sit. When I'm adjusting the pivot, I'm looking mainly at the skin tones to make sure that they have the right level of contrast. Okay, so that's good. And I'm gonna adjust it down a little. Okay, so that's our first exposure contrast adjustment. I'm gonna create a new node with Alt S. With this node, I'm going to lay down the groundwork for our blue-green look. So I'm gonna drag my midtones towards bluey-green. That's quite nice. Our shadows are starting to get a little bit cyan, so we're just gonna push this the other way balance that out of touch using shift Z to bounce back to full screen. So using shift D to bypass all, you can see that that's okay. You can still see though, mainly our highlights are pretty nasty still, especially in this these sections here, very desaturated and washed out. So what we're gonna do, um, before we add any shapes and start to deal with this, I'm gonna add a new node. This is gonna be my contrast and exposure for my look. So I'm gonna go ahead and whack up the contrast a little bit more. Again, adjusting my pivot, looking at the skin tones. As you can see, it is exacerbating these sections. Uh, before we deal with that, I'm just gonna add another node. This is gonna be my color portion of my look and start to really push this bluey green look. Again, really simple, just pushing the midtones towards cyan. You can see the shadows get really contaminated really quick. So just, you know, pushing a little bit of counterbalance in there. And so again, if I bypass that with control D, yeah, so that's starting to really look like a cold fluorescent office environment. So I like that. Cool. So if we shift D. Okay. So now let's add some shapes. So I'm going to go to my first node and hit shift S that creates a node before the selected node. I always like to add my shapes uh, before my grade adjustments. I found that it gives slightly better results. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna create some shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead to my window tab. I'm gonna get my curve tool and I'm gonna draw around the selected areas. And I'm gonna add a generous amount of feather. Perfect. Um, what I'm gonna do as well, you can see the nose has also the same overblown effect. So we're gonna add another curve. Click, click and hold to add a Bezier curve. Click, click, click and hold. And I'm gonna add some more feather. Okay, with my nose shape selected, I'm gonna go over to my tracker tab and I'm gonna track forward. Fantastic. And I'm gonna go ahead, select my forehead shape and track forward. Okay, now that we've tracked our shapes, we can go up here, turn the power windows off and head to our color wheel tab. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I just wanna reduce some of the contrast in this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag down my contrast. Already you can see that this is helping sort of just ease the area, but it is also lifting some of this area. So we're just gonna go ahead and nudge the shadows down a little. Okay. Secondly, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try and push some skin tone color into these into these patches. So if I go up to my gain and just apply some red orangey hues. Now you can see that the saturation is getting a little bit extreme. So I'm gonna go ahead and just desat a little. Okay, so you can already see with just a reduction of contrast and the reduction of saturation, um, you can already start to see that um, it really helps blend those areas back in. Just try pushing the gain down a little bit more. I might put my gain up a little bit more. I'm gonna go to my window tab. I'm just gonna blur out the shape a little bit more. And this one. 
One thing that I can do as well is if I'm worried that this area doesn't have as much texture as the other bits of skin, I can go ahead to my color wheel tab, go over to the second tab and add some mid-tone detail. So you can see what that does here. Um, I'm just going to add a touch of that back in using Shift-Z to bounce back out. The other part of the image that is suffering from those overblown highlights is this section of the shirt. We're going to add another node with Alt-S. Click our first node, Control-C and Control-V. That's copying and pasting that node. Go over to our Window tab. We're going to remove our Nose Tracker. I'm just going to go ahead and grab our shape and chuck it down onto his shoulder. To remove some of these control points, we're gonna again use the middle mouse button. Okay. And that's pretty good. To remove the power window from my view, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And I'm gonna bypass this with control D. Okay, so you can start to see a bit of a line here. Go ahead and really boost that feather. Turn my size down a little. And also, if I go over to my key tab, you can uh, reduce your overall output of your node. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this to about 60%, 70%. Now, so I can still see the outside of the mask, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this one with the middle mouse button. Hitting Control D again, that's nice. Again, I might just increase the feather a little bit more and reduce the output a little bit. Fantastic, so we can group these guys together by lassoing and create a compound node. And we can call this uh, shapes. So again, if we control D this, you can see what we've done here. The last thing that I wanna do to this look is add a vignette. So I'm gonna go ahead, add an Alt S new node. And I'm gonna go back to my shapes, create myself a circle shape and start to drag this out. I'll increase the feather using the mouse wheel to zoom out, expand my shape, and because this is an office with top-down lighting, I'm just gonna accentuate that shift Z to jump back to full screen. Make sure this is set to the outside of the shape. I'm now going to use my gamma and just bring down some of these midtones. I'm gonna remove my power window from the image and just shift E. At the same time, um, I'm just going to right-click, add a new outside node, which will use my shape from the previous and invert the area that I'm selecting. So now if I make any adjustments, it'll be adjusting that to the top half of the image. And I'm gonna go ahead and just boost my midtones a little and compensate with a bit of contrast. Okay, so you can see this is adding a little bit of oomph to the top end. If we lasso these, create a compound node, we can call this vignettes, hit control D. You can see that just sort of rebalances the image a little. Okay, so I've separated all of our components. So if we hit Alt D, we started off with a base grade, which just balances our image out, color, contrast, exposure wise. And then we added our look. It increased the contrast to the point where our problem areas were starting to look not very nice. So we added some shapes to alleviate that. And finally, we tweak the lighting of the shot just a little bit to refocus towards the top end. And that's it, that's our finished image. What would you have done to fix this shot? Let me know in the comments below. If you wanna support me in the work that I do, go ahead and visit my Patreon account. But otherwise, I will see you guys for another tutorial very soon. Cheers.